Hi, my name is Tom and some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. Welcome to the first video of 24. This won't come as a surprise when you saw my last State of the Collection video. 15 minutes before closing time on Christmas Eve, the Tag Heuer Glassbox Carrera joined the collection. After the release last year, I had tried on the blue version before, but I felt it didn't have enough contrast or everything was a bit too blue for me. And it wasn't until the skipper was released that it got onto my radar again. I was in New York at the time and went to the boutique to try on the skipper, being rather certain this would be my next watch. But they also let me try on this reverse panda, and from the minute I picked it up, I was sold on it. So the Carrara has some massive history behind it. Introduced in 1963 and designed by Jack Hoyer, the Carrera is a legend you can easily categorize along the Rolex Daytona or Amiga Speedmaster. But history isn't my forte and pronunciation isn't either. So if you want to see loads more Carreras, you might want to check out the Hodinkee Reference Points video. Fast forward to 2023, for the 60th anniversary Tag Heuer introduced two new 39mm glass box references that are finally non-limited. There is a more modern looking blue dial version and a black dial reverse panda that takes a bit more vintage design cues. These are technically identical watches and beside the color, the main difference between these two is that the blue appears to sport more of a bi compax layout because the running second subdial isn't recessed and there is no date window positioned at 6 o'clock. And this immediately brings me to what for most will be a make or break factor on the reverse panda. The date is positioned at 12 o'clock. From a user experience perspective, this might look like the stupidest design decision ever and in reality, well, let's face it, it, it is, right? When stopped, the chrono hand just blocks the date window and if you want to read the date, you will want to have the chrono hand running. But they could have done worse and positioned the date window between 4 and 5. Side by side with the blue dial, I really prefer the placement on the black one over the non-colored match date window on the blue dial. Let's get some specifications out of the way. The glass box has a 39mm diameter and a lug to lug 46mm. Depending on who you ask, the total height of the watch is 13 or 14 millimeters. And the best part, it has 20.5 millimeter lugs. I mean, who came up with that? Now the watch comes on a really good black perforated leather rally style strap. And it has a folding clasp, double push buttons with the tag logo. Right out of the box, this was one of the most supple letters I have ever experienced on a watch. But I'm also a bit worried about longevity as this system of feeding the strap through for adjusting the size really strains the thin leather. At the moment, no steel bracelet is available. Though I have seen some hacks floating around the internet where people manage to fit an older Carrera bracelet on it. Now, 20.5 millimeters doesn't have to be a deal breaker as the gap to 20 millimeter straps is barely visible and even OCD people like me don't mind it too much. Now, this brings me to the sponsor of today's video and that is Artem Straps. Since I first started collecting watches, I always paired their sailcloth straps to my watches. They made a few appearances in my previous strap videos too, so it totally makes sense to have Artem on board as a channel sponsor. Recently they added the grey and beige sailcloth straps to the lineup and these are a pretty awesome combination for the glass box. The quality of the material and the clasps rival that of the top watch brands and the deployant clasp is very similar to the OG Hoyer strap. They also have an assortment of high quality nylon straps and I kinda like the bond look on the glass box. But I'm pretty sure 007 wouldn't agree. What do you think of this combo? Okay, back to the watch and this feels like stating the obvious, but the glass box has its name from an incredible looking box glass sapphire crystal that runs edge to edge with a no bezel design. The black dial has a fine circular graining, still maintaining a very black glossy look. And the polished applied indices actually dig into the sloped reho that leads up to the tachymeter scale encased by that glass box sapphire. Combine that with the recessed silver subdials in their concentric circle finish and you have an amazing depth on the dial. And yes, there is a lot going on to this dial, but everything is still in harmony and it is kind of the dial that will keep you looking down on your wrists for a long, long time. The watch has a water resistance of 100 meters, but I'm still not going to be the one that goes swimming with a chronograph, something my dive watches in the collection wouldn't be happy about. The case is stainless steel with a mix of polished and brushed surfaces. The lugs are polished and the case flanks have a fine horizontal satin brush finish. Even the properly sized pump pushers got that mix of brushed and polished finishing. The signed crown provides plenty of grip. If we turn over the watch via the sapphire crystal case back, we can see the new in-house movement. A movement that is an evolution of the Hoyer 02 movement. It's a column wheel chronograph with a vertical clutch mechanism. 
A vertical clutch couples the chronograph gear via friction instead of a gear, providing a smoother start of the chronograph's seconds hand. To put it in plain English, you don't see that jump when you engage the chrono. This is my first automatic chronograph, where the rotor definitely adds to the height of the movement and overall height of the case, but I have to say that it's rather pleasant not having to worry about winding it every couple of days. The movement has an impressive 80 hours of power reserve, so this means I could leave it in the watch box over the weekend without having to reset it. I couldn't find anything about anti-magnetism, shock resistance or timekeeping precision anywhere on the TAG website. In an interview on the TAG magazine I could only find some quotes on how the new movement represents a leap in quality and durability and the warranty is extended to 5 years. No word anywhere about COSC certification or anything else like that. Beside the skeletonized rotor that represents the TAG logo and some simple stripe finishing on the top parts, the movement feels a bit industrial. Personally, I don't find the open case back an added value and I wouldn't have minded a closed case back for a more tooly feel. But I guess this whole Glassbox Carrera isn't supposed to be a tool. Everything else is designed to look as good as possible, making this more of a chronograph that you bring to the dinner table rather than the racetrack. The reverse panda brings back more of those vintage vibes with a faux patina loom, both on the hands and on the circular loom plots above the indices. It's executed in a way that it doesn't feel too forced or too fake, if you know what I mean. The loom is also executed in a way that you never really see it. I cheated the footage here by using a UV torch, but so far I have yet to walk back into the house or be in a dark environment where I have seen the loom really loom up. Where my Speedmaster would even be happy with an overcast day to charge up a bit, on the Carrera nothing really happens. Does this affect legibility in, in total darkness? Yes, but the real cool thing about the glass box is how it only needs the slightest shimmer of light for all the polished parts to reflect and catch the light. So when you're planted in front of your TV or when you're driving your car, you are still able to tell the time. So after one month of ownership, how do I feel about it? Well, I can't explain it, but I really love it. I love wearing it. It feels properly made. I weighed it at 90 grams, making this watch feeling like it's floating on my wrist. The design of the pushers will catch your sleeve a bit more, but even wearing it on a double pass NATO, I really don't mind the height. In every kind of light there is just always things happening to the dial. It makes me smile and I don't see myself getting tired of this one soon. For me it's the perfect blend of a more dressy piece while still feeling like me. I think Tag Heuer released one of the best watches of 23 and I'm curious how much they will experiment with this design. I'd like to see a version with some more brushed surfaces on the hands and indices. I did a bunch of posts on Instagram already and judging from the comments this watch seems to be really popular. However, I haven't seen many of these in the WatchFam community and I wonder why that is. Maybe the speedy is and will always be king. Curious to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.